Yo my people, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna show you how to make three unique VFX transitions to spice up your music videos. Let's just get straight into it. No more talk, yeah? Bow. Okay guys, we'll have a 15 second clip of basically the entire music video that I'm working with. If you're working with raw footage, you'll be able to do it a lot easier because you'll have more control over which clips you'd want in it. But since I'm doing this as a tutorial with a random video, I have much less control over it. So what I've done, I've added an S flicker and then I've also added an RSMB Pro. Now, if you can't afford RSMB Pro, now if you can't afford RSMB, that's completely fine. You're able to find it elsewhere if you know what I mean. So you can do some research into that at your own risk. So basically, after you've added these two effects, what I wanted to do is right click, time and time stretch. Now, this is the speed of the video. so. If I do, let's say five, right? Five makes it 5% of the whole clip. So all of this will be condensed into 5% worth of time, if that makes sense. So if I click five, now what? There we go. So it's gonna look something like this now. Sick, right? Because since we've added the effects, without the effects, it looks awful. Trust me, have a look. Well, no, it's not awful. It's still manageable, but this just makes it look 10 times better. So there we go. I'm gonna fit that in between my two clips and you should have something looking like this now. You see, that's already good, but I just wanna add a couple more things to just finish it off. So what I'm gonna do is add an adjustment layer and then one, two, three to the left, then cut. One, two, three, one, two, three to the right, cut. Then in this layer, I'd like you to add the effects tab over here. What I want you to add is brightness and contrast. Once you've added that, go back over to effect controls, keyframe both of these, and then zoom in. Copy these over to the other side so you have zero on each side. Then where the clips meet, I want you to just crank both of these up. You can adjust this to your liking. I want it to be nice and bright. So I'm gonna do about there. And then also I'm gonna do one and copy it over for the end of the clip. And now you have something looking like this. Hey, yo, What's Pretty up? cool, right? For sure. One thing, if you see me save it, please get into the habit of saving because After Effects has a nasty habit of crashing. I don't know why, it, it just happens a lot, especially when you're dealing with high volume projects. So save as much as you can. I just save, now I've just built it into my memory. So I just gotta make sure to save whenever I can. Okay guys, moving on to effect number two. First, you need to rotoscope out your layer. So control D, copy that. Then on the top layer, get your rotoscoping tool and rotoscope out your subject. In my case, I'm rotoscoping out Sench. Also, I'm doing this at half resolution. Remember, this is just a tutorial. Do yours on full. Once you think everything looks okay, make sure to freeze it because then you won't have to deal with it loading every single time you play it. Okay guys, so we have our rotoscope layer on top now. Now what I want you to do, looking at my next clip here, you can see Sench raising his arm up, right? So I'm gonna use that to my advantage. It ends it there, so I'm gonna drag my clip in a bit more just so it starts around, let's see there. Just again, analyze your clip, how it's looking. Then on the end frame, what I want you to do is Control D, go to here, time and freeze frame. So you have a solid frame of that exact last frame. Now what I want you to do, drag this up just underneath the rotoscope layer, but above the original layer. So now you'll have something looking like this. It's looking stupid as hell, but trust me, we've got to fix that now. So now what I want you to do is just be creative. You don't have to do it the exact way I'm doing it. Just get a bit creative with the movement. So what I want it to do is I want it to bounce, I say, bounce down a bit. I want it to bounce down. And then after that, I want it to go up. And I want it to go back down to, so let's say, there. Just trust the process, guys. Trust the process. Again, looking stupid. But now, we're going to be doing a lot of other stuff. So what I want you to do now is S, keyframe scale, and then from 
where my keyframe ends, which is here. By the way, if you want to view all the keyframes you're using, make sure to press U. It's a good little shortcut. Then I'm going to put the scale down to zero. So now we've got something looking like this. Hmm, it's all right. Nothing special. So now what I'm going to need to do, like I always say that will complete it, is guess what? Motion blur. Use one of my flash transitions from my old one. Bring it up to where we need it. Bring it to the top layer. So, and then duplicate that around twice. Let's see what that's looking at now. Nice. All right, people, we're on to effect number three, the final one. We're gonna be using a similar technique to my last video, but we're just gonna slightly tweak it. You'll see what I mean. So it's a zoom through transition. So I want mine to zoom in to this from over here. So I'm gonna copy over my clip with Control D, right click, time, freeze frame. Bring it over, cut, delete. So now you have something looking like this. Bear in mind, this is all one sequence I'm doing it in. So it's carrying on from effect number two. Okay, now you see I want to do it in this little gap here. So you can't just use a circle or a rectangle. I'm going to make my own shape with the pen tool. You can also use the hotkey G to get the same thing coming up, right? Okay, guys, this is what's come up now. So all you got to do is go into the drop down menu here, masks and invert. So now we've got something looking like this. See how there's that little gap there? And obviously I've not done mine perfectly. I'm a bit OCD so I don't like this, but just for the sake of the video, I'm not gonna waste any more time because you guys can spend a lot more time than I am on this. All I'm gonna do, right, is on my mask, I'm gonna go into the other drop down menu and click feather. I'm only gonna do a little bit, not too much, because if you do too much, it'll look stupid like that. So I'm only gonna put a little bit, just about that much. Now I'm going to copy that over and on the bottom layer I'm just going to uninvert it. So I've got two layers now, one on the inside, one on the outside, yeah? Next I'm going to disable the inner layer and we're going to do the exact same as the last tutorial. Make a new 2 no camera, cut it to where we need it to be and now we move on to animation. So I'll go into the drop down menu, point of interest, position at the end because that's where we're finishing it and here make sure you've disabled your clip on the inside as you can see. I'm gonna zoom in, let's say with the dolly tool, go all the way in. Oh, almost forgot. Remember, make sure 3D layers. I made this point last time and now you see me make the mistake. So that's how it works. If there's no 3D layer, it won't zoom. Make sure you leave no gaps, seeing there's nothing showing and you should have something looking like this now. You see, I've got my motion blur on so it kind of makes it a bit cleaner, but it's still not clean, right? See that's a little jarring bit there, it just changes and it's not smooth here. So F9, I want mine to come in a little bit faster near the end, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, I taught you guys about the graph editor last time, so you should be you should be good with that already. So now we have something looking like this. That's the speed I want it at. For the sake of the background, making it keyframe into position, let's say moving it from behind and going underneath like a watch transition or like the chain transition I showed in the last one it it would look funny so to make it as clean as possible I'm just going to do an opacity transition so opacity 100 over here a little bit before I'm going to just stick it on zero see guys okay let's have a final look at how everything's looking much better yeah you see how it's all kind of moving together and slowly the opacity goes and then it hits the original clip so we don't have to worry about any mask showing ah man there we go okay guys here is the final clip of all three effects used together let me know what you're thinking how you found the tutorial and make sure to like comment subscribe yo make sure you guys chat to me man i want to see what kind of effects you lot want being done i'm going to be doing a lot of cool effects anyway but to me, it's more important if I hear your lots of opinions. So make sure you drop a comment down below. What do you want to see? All right, cool.